Doctor Who, Timeless Tales, Conversations with Daleks, written and read by Ross Wilson. The huge flying saucer slid gracefully into the hangar. As it began to land, a team of well-dressed welcomers got to their feet and walked over to greet it. The leader of the group, a tall green man named Ray, removed a small communicator from a pouch on his waist and held it up to his mouth. The ship's beginning to land, he said. The ambassador should be with you shortly. Very good, replied a voice from the communicator. The team came to a stop just as the saucer touched down. The ship settled for a few moments before a section of the hull opened and swung down, creating a ramp between the floor of the hangar and the interior of the craft. Ray took a step forward, ready to meet whoever was about to emerge from the mysterious vessel. Ray was a member of the Scavru, an incredibly advanced race of beings from the planet Scav. The Scavru were a naturally curious species. Before they'd even finished exploring their own world, they'd began to reach out into space. They had made contact with countless other species, formed countless alliances and trade agreements. They had become incredibly powerful. But even so, they had remained humble and had dedicated their lives to helping others. They had even built a special space station to act as a venue for interplanetary talks. That station was where the huge saucer had just landed. Usually, the Scavru were the ones to initiate contact. But this time, someone else had made contact with them. A new race who were entering this sector of space for the first time. They had requested a private meeting with the space station's coordinator, and, in the interest of civility, the coordinator had agreed. The aliens had only communicated through non-verbal messages. Nobody knew what they looked or sounded like. At least, not until the ambassador slowly emerged from the saucer and began to glide down the ramp towards Ray and his team. It looked to Ray like a small tank, more mechanical than organic. But they were not robots. They had made that clear in their messages. So if they were organic, why confine themselves to these strange tank-like casings? Was it for mobility? Or was it for combat? Ray couldn't be sure, but one of the alien's metallic appendages looked a lot like a gunstick. Greetings, Ray said politely, shaking off all the negative thoughts that had crept into his mind. We hope you had a safe journey. It is an honour to finally welcome the Daleks to our station. The Dalek ambassador looked around. It carefully considered its surroundings, before eventually turning its single eye back to Ray. The Dalek Empire thanks you for your hospitality. It is our pleasure. Ray replied, slightly taken aback by the ambassador's harsh, unpleasant voice. Can we interest you in any of our Scavru delicacies? We find that food can be an excellent way for different species to get to know each other. I will speak with your coordinator, the Dalek replied bluntly. Yes, of course. Straight to business. Well, if you'll follow me, I will take you up to his office. Ray gestured ahead and the welcome team stepped aside, making way for the Dalek. The Dalek began to move, seeming to not even notice them. Not one for small talk, Ray joked. The Dalek did not respond. In a handsome office a few floors up, the station's coordinator sat, anxiously waiting for his guest to arrive. He wasn't normally an anxious person, but today was different. Besides Ray, he would be the first Scavru this Dalek would ever properly encounter. Whatever happened today would form the basis for the two species' relationship going forward. 
Anyone would feel anxious in that position. But it was the role that he had chosen, and he felt a great deal of pride in carrying it out. A soft chime came from the door at the far side of the room. A few moments later, the door rose open and Ray entered, the Dalek following closely behind. Welcome, the coordinator said, getting to his feet and taking a good look at the Dalek. Make yourself... uh, comfortable, if you can. He turned his attention to Ray. Thank you, sir. I'll take things from here. Thank you, sir. Ray slipped quietly out of the room, leaving the coordinator alone with the Dalek. The coordinator returned to his seat, while the Dalek trundled slowly around the room, surveying the technology that lined the walls. There was one big screen on the wall behind the coordinator that the Dalek seemed particularly interested in. I would offer you a drink, the coordinator said, attempting to break the ice. But, well... I'm not sure if your species does drink. Do you drink? Or eat? The Dalek glared at the coordinator. The coordinator went to speak again, when suddenly something flashed up on the big screen behind him. You have an incoming communication, barked the Dalek. You will answer it. Yes, the coordinator replied nervously. Of course. He pressed a sequence of buttons on his desk, and an image flashed up on the screen. It was another Dalek, only this one was a vibrant gold colour. It also looked shorter than the Ambassador, but it made up for this with a huge globe-like head. Coordinator! The Golden Dalek boomed. I am the Emperor of the Daleks. The Coordinator gulped. Hello? I've heard a lot about you in the messages. It's a pleasure to finally speak with you. Are you well? The Emperor was silent. Sorry, shall we not bother with the pleasantries? Daleks have no need for pleasantries. I see. Well, What can I do for you, your, uh, majesty? Your people are powerful. You have detailed knowledge of countless civilizations. This is true. We have helped numerous species make their way in the universe. We have dedicated ourselves to helping as many... We desire you. The coordinator glanced nervously at the ambassador, then back at the emperor. What knowledge is it you desire, exactly? You know these civilizations. You understand them. You know their weaknesses. Well, yes, I suppose. Why would you need to know that? Surely you want to know about their culture, their technology, their history. No? The Daleks have no interest in these things. We seek only to conquer and destroy. The coordinator took a deep breath. I'm very sorry. I'm not sure we can help you with that. All we require is information. You can easily provide this. The coordinator took an even deeper breath. He was scared, of course he was, but he couldn't let that cloud his judgement. He had to do the right thing. He had to be strong. Perhaps we can help you. But we're choosing not to. The Dalek ambassador crept forward, its gunstick pointed directly at the coordinator. You do not have a choice. If you do not comply, the Daleks will destroy you and everything you have built. Ah, I see. 
but I'm not going to let you intimidate me, I'm afraid. Kill the coordinator, the Emperor commanded, now speaking directly to the Ambassador. He will pay for his defiance. The Ambassador moved closer still, ready to strike. EXTERMINATE! <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the hangar, Ray noticed something moving in the Dalek saucer. He crept forward to get a better view. He could just make out the shape of two Daleks creeping down the ramp. And there was another pair following directly behind them. And another pair. And another and another. A small army was on its way. Ray looked back at his team of unarmed attendants. Things were about to get interesting. As the first pair of Daleks reached the bottom of the ramp, Ray raised his hands and smiled pleasantly. Your ambassador will be back with you shortly, he reassured the approaching armada. I'm sure the negotiations are going very well. One of the Daleks turned to stare directly at Ray. The negotiations are over. Your coordinator has refused our terms. Ray shrugged. I don't know how you could know that, but whatever's going on, I'm sure they'll work something out. Your coordinator has defied the Daleks. No one defies the Daleks. The sea of warriors raised their gunsticks in unison. Exterminate them! Exterminate! The hangar was filled with light as the Daleks opened fire. When the smoke finally cleared, Ray and his team couldn't help but grin. What has happened? wailed one of the Daleks. Explain! Our station is incredibly advanced, Ray explained. There's a special force field in place that intercepts and nullifies any energy weapon discharges. Essentially, your weapons are useless here. A sea of Dalek heads began to look around frantically. We may not be armed, but we're not defenseless. You have no power over us. All you've done is show your true colours. The frantic heads froze, clueless as to what to do now. Eventually, a Dalek spoke. Withdraw! 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 Almost before the last Dalek had even entered the ship, the ramp began to rise and the engines roared into life. Ray and his team barely had time to register what was even happening before the ship had disappeared through the station's oxygen bubble and out into the void of space. The Daleks were gone. Except for one. So you see, energy weapons don't work on this station. We only do peaceful negotiations here. The coordinator looked at the ambassador, then at the emperor on the wall screen. He was waiting for someone to speak. You have tricked the Daleks, the emperor shrieked suddenly. You have lured us into a trap. I rather think it was you who did that, replied the coordinator. But let's not dwell on the past. We got off on the wrong foot, but that doesn't mean we can't go on to have a beautiful relationship. You will pay for what you have done today. You will face the true power of the Daleks. The Emperor's enormous head disappeared from the screen, leaving the Coordinator alone with the Ambassador. The Daleks will be successful, the Ambassador said. The coordinator could swear there was a hint of embarrassment in its voice. Your people will be destroyed. The Daleks will return. And when they do, all the other species you wanted to destroy will be ready for them. What? What will you do with me? 
what will happen now? Well, you can't shoot me. I don't want to shoot you. I suppose we'll have to have a conversation. <laughs>